How's it going guys? Welcome to the 7th Arduino tutorial in which we're going to discuss one of the basic concepts that I wanted to discuss a long time ago but never got around to it so that would be button debouncing. So as you can see I have a small setup where I have two LEDs on the breadboard along with a button which is used to toggle the LEDs and currently there's no button debouncing present in my software or hardware so as you can see if I if I keep just pressing the button, you would see the LEDs blinking sometimes. Um, so I'm going to discuss the concept of the whole uh, button debouncing and what's happening exactly in a separate video. Uh, but I actually wanted to show you what is actually happening in the hardware. So as you can see, sometimes I press and the LEDs quickly blink and they don't just toggle as you would expect them to. Um, so let's take a look at the code what, which I have right now and see how we can first of all debounce in software and then I'm also going to explain how you can debounce in hardware so stay tuned alright so taking a look at the sketch that I have currently uploaded on, on the Arduino as you can see I have a button and two LEDs declared I also have a boolean for uh, to keep the state of the button and I have a toggle which uh, is also a boolean. Uh, I'm going to explain that in a second what it does. In the setup function I have uh, two LEDs as output, one button as an input and arbitrarily I've declared two LEDs, one high, one low, uh, just for starting purposes. In the loop as you can see I write a digital read of the button high and if that is the case I'm going to say that the button is pressed uh, so that is set to true otherwise it is false and the toggle is false so what this creates is a situation where I can actually check if the button has been pressed once or it has been just held down uh, and what that basically means is that if I just hold my finger on the button I'm not going to just keep on toggling the LEDs during that process I'm only going to toggle it once so once again uh, because of that issue I have to check for if the button is pressed uh, is true and the toggle is currently false so that means the, uh, the toggle has not been executed yet so if if it has not been executed I execute it once so I set it to true and I execute the function toggle which is basically setting LED, the LEDs to the opposite of the of what they currently are so in order to make this uh, function and debounceable I'm going to actually go ahead and add a condition so I'm going to add an int bounce which is which I'm going to set to zero for now I'm going to change this button is pressed uh, true because I'm going to add a condition so if it is high I'm going to simply increment the bounce so we're going to increment the bounce we're also going to say that debounce is going to be reset back to zero um, in case of the button not being pressed anymore or the button going back to low uh, and we are also going to add an if statement so if debounce bigger equal to and I have tested several values for this case so in my case 5000 worked pretty well you can experiment on your own this value is basically going to indicate how long you wait uh, to be certain that the button is actually not bouncing anymore so you may set this to something lower it depends on your on many factors uh, notably your button so in this case I am going to say button pressed equals to true and this should be about all we need for button debouncing so let's uh, check the sketch and upload it and once again this is the value which indicates how long you need to wait before accepting that the button was pressed so just to explain this a little bit you may set this to a lower lower value so for example 500 or even 50 but the lower you set it the less time you give yourself to check that debounce so preferably you would like to set it as long as you can without having a delay uh, in your button so let's take a look at what our uh, same setup does right now 
All right, so we have our debouncing implemented. So as you can see, no matter how hard I try, the LEDs are responding perfectly to my button presses. You no longer see them flickering here and there. So obviously if I, if I try and sort of press extremely fast, that's only the contact not making um, sort of the closure and it's not actually the button bouncing effect. So let's take a look at the hardware solution that we can also implement. All right, so if you have noticed, uh, this is my current setup for the button. So as you can see, uh, the pin is normally pulled down low and once you press the button, it goes too high. So that's what I'm detecting in my software. Uh, so what happens is when this contact makes, uh, basically when I create this contact with the button, it goes high, low, high, low, which is the bouncing of the button. But if you were to insert a capacitor right here, uh, basically you would have a low on this capacitor, right? So zero volts. And when you press the button, instead of going up instantly, this voltage would actually take time to go to five volts depending on the capacitor value. So that is one way that you can debounce the button through hardware. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, these are the two methods uh, which you can use to debounce your buttons right now. So the hardware method, as well as the software that I explained. In the extended version, I would like to touch up on <clears throat> button debouncing a little bit more and actually explain the concept. So take a look at that. I'm going to post the link in the description. Thank you very much. If you've enjoyed the video, make sure to leave me a comment. If you have a question, post it down there as well. If you feel like you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe. Thank you. Bye.